Hey, how's it going? Mr. Bill here. And today I want to talk to you about sidechain compression times. So this project file here is from my new website, live.mrbillstunes.com. And if you go to the project file section, you can download it. This is uh, Schlappy, which Austin AU5 and I wrote last year, I believe. Um, and you can get this project file along with like 50 others on my website. Um, you can see here there's a missing sample. It says some shit about why there's a missing sample and shows all the plugins that I used here. All these links, if you click them, will go to the the plugin website and whatnot. Um, but whatever, forget about that. I just wanted to let you know about the project file thing. Uh, so actually what we're talking about here is sidechain compression times. So what, what I'm talking about here is like when you're setting your compressor for sidechaining, what milliseconds do you make your release so uh, you know if i have for instance um this is the drop from schlappy right so let's listen to it without sidechain compression in in its form without sidechain compression so this bass here i would want to sidechain compress this but what do i set the release to if you see if I set it to like 19.8 milliseconds or something slow like that, it's just going to sound like this. Oh, sorry, fast like this. It's not really having much effect at all, but if I make it really long, like 900 milliseconds or almost a thousand, it pretty much, you can hear that it's pretty much silencing it out completely. Um, so, so we want a happy medium within there. Uh, usually I would just listen to it and just be like, okay, that sounds about right. So I'll do something like this. It's probably worth noting that the reason I would do this, um, well, there's two reasons I would do this. The first reason is um, to get the bass sound out of the way when the kick and the snare are happening. And that way it just sounds a little more clear, like clears up the mix a bit, you know. That's way too much. So I'll bring the threshold up. You can hear the kick and the snare really punching through now. So that's one reason. The second reason is like stylistic stuff. So, you know, hip hop and whatnot would just, you have to use it. So, or, or house music where it's sort of the breathing bass sound. Uh, you need to use sidechain compression. So, um, so there's a, actually kind of a mathematical way to work this out. And that's um, what I wanted to show you today. So if you remember my first tutorial ever, we used a, a calculation. And that calculation was 60,000 divided by the BPM of the track, and that gave us a quarter note. So, for instance, this track is 148 BPM. <clears throat> so if we pull out our calculator and we go 60,000 divided by the BPM, which is 148, we get 405. So I think that's a quarter note. So uh, let's see if we get a quarter note. Actually, <clears throat> you know what? Yeah, it's a quarter note. So um, actually, I've realized at this point though that you don't need to do that calculation you can if you want but in ableton you can actually just highlight a section of the grid it doesn't matter where you highlight um and if you just highlight it you can see down the bottom here in this little wet see this orange bar here currently it says media files are missing <coughs> and i can't find it because it's just <laughs> it's just a freeze file and the way that ableton deals with freeze files is kind of like crazy so um if I just highlight that section on the master and then put my cursor over it, you can see down in that orange bar now it says duration, like at the end of all of that information, it's, so it gives me information about the selection. And at the very end of that information, it says zero minutes, zero seconds, and 405 milliseconds. I think that's what it would be. So this is another good way to work out the calculation of the time. It saves you opening a calculator. So it's if, I, if I wanted to know an eighth note, I would just highlight half of that amount and then I can see it's 203. If I wanted to know a 16th note, I could highlight that and know that it's 101. So now, maybe I would just have this sidechain compressor going for a 16th note, so 101 milliseconds, seeing as this doesn't give you a value in, you know, the quarter notes or um, it doesn't give you like a sync value, it just gives you a millisecond value. So, so I'd go 101 milliseconds and let's see how that sounds now. And then it's just up to me to set the threshold of how quiet I want it to go every time. And you can hear how much more musical that sounds now. It just sounds kind of perfect. Like it breathes at the exact right time that it needs to and stuff like that. And I think um, 
some things like that that you can clean up in your mix just fixing little compositional deficiencies like you know having your compressors right on the 16th note or the eighth note or something like that can really like open up your mix and your production to sound a lot tighter uh so the second thing to note here <clears throat> is that when you do this you're definitely going to want to make sure uh that what you're sending into the compressor as the sidechain input so see i'm taking the audio from sc input is pretty much just a click and the reason why is because this release time doesn't come into effect until the input goes away. So um, if I'm just sending a tiny little input into it, so let's see, this input is actually 12 milliseconds long. So technically, I have to remove 12 milliseconds from this release time if I want it to be perfect. However, our ears aren't fast enough to detect that sort of really, really quick um, stuff and anything sort of under 30 milliseconds <coughs> um, just uh, this sounds tonal to us actually it doesn't even sound like a delay for instance so um you know for instance if i uh if i so that's what i'm sending into the compressor it's just a literally literally a click um and that's just to enable that release time to be more accurate uh and it needs to kind of be about 10 milliseconds long because anything shorter than that and it just starts to become a little unregisterable but um but yeah basically what you want is you want a, a short click sample like this and you want that click sample to hit every time there's a kick and a snare. So if I play this click sample and my drums at the same time, like this, you can see that they're kind of hitting at the same time. And that's what you want. You want um you want this click sample basically hitting at the same time as your drums. Um, and it takes a minute, like you can see we've done this for the whole tune. It does take a minute to do that, but it it enables your release time on your compressor so there's no real argument as to why you wouldn't do it like it just it's just better like it's much better for your compressor to be more accurate when side chaining uh, and then you can obviously set the gain input here of your side chain input which kind of acts like a second threshold control really because if you think about it you could have your threshold control set as just leave it where it is like at zero and then use this gain control to push signal into that threshold so you get something like this you can see the gain reduction over here it's pretty small well actually it's quite large but if i turn this gain all the way down you can see it's not hitting the gain reduction at all anymore so technically this is another threshold control at this point so you could turn that all the way up and then start messing with this and you get a little bit more uh control over how hard you can boost the threshold or crush the signal crush the threshold i don't know anyway you, you get the point so if I turn this all the way down now, it's just it's way too much. Anyway, um, that's kind of what I, what, I, what I wanted to talk about today is, um, yeah, sidechain inputs and, and sidechain times, like release times. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial. If you do, or if you did, and you want to go and get this project file, I'll leave a link in the description. I'll leave an end card. Um, you can go to my website and get a bunch of project files just like this one. And they're all standardized like this one too. So, you know, everything is frozen if it has third-party stuff on it. Everything is colored this way. It's all nicely and neatly grouped. Um, everything is collected and saved, but every now and then there's a freeze file missing like this. But honestly, that freeze file is like, let's see. Actually, that's just searching for the freeze files. Let's see, this, so this freeze file is, I actually don't even know what it is, like that's how probably pointless it is. It's, it's probably like one of these little glitchy things in here which doesn't even matter anymore. Um, so for the most part, all the projects will play as expected. And I think um, projects like this are, are a really good way to learn. Like I learned a lot back in the day by downloading Tom Cosm's projects, for example, and that's why I'm releasing my ones because... I think this is the best way to learn. You know, you can you can go in here and you can just like look at everything and sort of <coughs> see what how everything was made and and perhaps why it was made that way. Like for instance, this bass here, you can learn from this. You can go in here and go to this filter right here and go, oh, how how does this bass work? So if we turn this filter off, you can hear it's it's just a sine wave. That's it. And you can be like, okay, it looks like there's an FM sign here. So this filter here probably has a oscillator within it. And what we're doing is using the oscillator within this to FM with itself or something like that, I guess. And using the resonance as the pitch. So that's kind of, you know, you could you can learn from that. And then when you're making a track, you can perhaps be like, 
uh, oh, you know, I saw that thing in Bill and Austin's project and therefore I, I have another trick now in my basket that I can use for my projects. Or for instance, what is this? This weird resonant sound or, you know, there's like a lot of synth patches in here. A lot of weird little things that you can definitely pick up from. And uh, if you if you go through and just look at the patches. So what's this? It's like a ARP that Austin made or a synth. Yeah. Anyway, point is, go get the project, rip it apart. Um, tell me what you think. Remix it if you want. Just let me know if you do, uh, and and figure out what's going on in here, and you know figure out how how we've set up all the compressors, and then you can have more tricks for your basket to import into your own projects. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, check the description for all the links, and have a good day.